Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Paramount number 3561 commercial chain doorstop. It's a crash chain. They call it heavy duty, and uh, I wouldn't disagree with that term used for this crash chain. The 3560 is the 25 and a half inch version of this same chain. The 3561 is the 30 and a half inch length chain uh, version of this crash chain. Then there's a 3562 that is the same length as this 30 and a half. The primary difference is that it will have a um, like a cloth type cover rather than this um, not, uh, this vinyl and it will have solid brass mounting points. So rather than zinc like they have here, you'll have a better finish on those mounting points. Um, but the chain link diameter and the spring assembly is all the same and because the, quite, the, the cost difference is significant, I can't make an argument for you to buy the 3562. So keep that in mind. Although it does look nicer than, than I guess this shiny vinyl. And vinyl is of course very poor performing when it comes to extreme temperatures and exposure to ultraviolet light. But how much sunlight will it really see? Probably not a whole lot. Unless of course you keep that door open in the summer and it sees it all the time. So you might want in that case the 3562. But I'd also probably argue that the sheer strength of that brass material would be superior to this die-cast zinc material. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Um, where, are you gonna use, where will you use this crash chain? Well, you're going to use it in instances where you look to prevent the door from opening past a certain point, probably for reasons of safety uh, or security, um, and to work towards reducing the potential for damage to property and harm to people, more importantly. There are different devices for doing this type of job, whether it starts from something quite residential to a hinge pin mounted doorstop or a floor or baseboard mounted doorstop to something more robust that will mount to the floor or to the door or to the wall, maybe then up to a arm that's on a door closer that incorporates a dead stop or a spring style dead stop sort of provision. Crash chains are included in this discussion as pieces of hardware that are meant to do this job. And then there's the one piece of hardware that is exquisitely engineered to specifically do it, the door stopping job, in an engineered fail proof type approach and that would be an overhead stop whether it be surface mounted or concealed it's basically and there are different variants but a slide track sort of design so that when the door opens and it hits that point the dead stop point the stop point whatever that degree is that it has been engineered and then templated and then installed to account for that's a dead stop and going any further than that that piece of hardware is not really the piece of hardware that's going to fail uh, in that sort of scenario, even though it does. I mean, if you, you know, run a car into the door, it's, the track's going to break. Backing up, the best piece of hardware is the overhead stop, whether it be a hold open, a friction style, or a stop version. Probably the second best would be an arm that would have the provision on it from the beginning and that the door and frame have been manufactured to be prepped and more importantly reinforced to accept that hardware. The door is reinforced, the holes are drilled and tapped, the header is reinforced and the arm is meant to make that dead stop uh, sort of uh, principle work within the hardware. And every major manufacturer of door closers has uh, variants of this that incorporate a dead stop only or incorporate a hold open function as well. Some do it with a piece of forged iron in the arm itself. Others will do it with a spring assembly so that it will, do, whoa, that kind of scenario. Um, and all are good options. For sure below that would be the crash chain concept. And why are these 
not ideal. Well, they are ideal because in lots of instances, it's the only option, meaning you can't install a door closer with the proper arm and you can install an overhead stop because the door and frame aren't reinforced, the closer's already insta installed and templated for a specific scenario, so you can't really change, you may not be able to change the mounting location of the arm and the closer body without affecting uh, the change that you need to make for a dead stop position, a degree of opening, say 95 degree, uh, without drilling new holes. If it's a fire rated door, that's probably not, certainly not ideal. The, the, in those scenarios, the crash chain is the least worst of the options because there are, are no other options. Where it's not ideal in the fact is that by design, it's really not going to be able to handle an outrageous event on the door. A 35 mile an hour gust grabbing 21 square feet worth of door and it's going to rip it open because what you will see in traumatic events is I have seen the zinc base sh cr break, but really the Achilles heel on these sorts of hardware are the screws. All you're getting here are sheet metal screws. The door has not been reinforced for it. The frame's not been reinforced for it. So you're really dealing with the fact that the crash chain will slow it down until it gets ripped out of the door. If you expect or have already had a traumatic event on the door, you're going to want to forego screws like this, and you're going to want to sex bolt them, through bolt them, and we can help you with those fasteners through the door. And then the, you know, if the header's not reinforced for it, there's not a lot you can do there except maybe to find a, a jack nut. Uh, you can drill a hole and insert a nut into the header and then use a machine bolt and tighten that down and it will sandwich it on the inside kind of like a, well whatever all of the names are for drywall type anchors but think of a toggle bolt I guess goes through the hole and then springs open well these jack nuts as you tighten them fold they go from this wide they go from this wide to this wide and sandwich down on the inside face of the steel so you could use a machine bolt plus pulling the screws out this way is different than pulling them out this way. This sort of lateral attack, which you're going to have on the header, is not going to be the point of failure. This will always come out of the door first when you're using sheet metal screws. That's your point of failure. So if you can through bolt it, and then you can use a real secure mounting at the head, you've got a chance of it uh, significantly reducing that traumatic event. What's a traumatic event? Well, someone getting hurt. The door gets opened. It's very breezy outside. Everyone's done it at least 10 times in their life where you open the door and you realize, oh my gosh, it's windy outside. And the door just has a tendency to say, whoa, slow down, bring the door back. Well, imagine if you didn't have a good handle on it or if you had oil on your hands in a shop, lose control of the door and it just goes. Um, the problem with doing that is imagine, and I've seen this, I, I have seen it in simple examples and I have seen the damage to the door and wall and frame in extreme examples imagine imagine six inch concrete block with face brick so let's just say you're about eight inch thick on the wall whatever it is you've got a five and three quarter frame centered in that wall overlapping the face brick a little bit door gets open to about a hundred degrees and by that point the outside face of the door is going to make contact with the outside corner of the face brick you can imagine in your mind's eye that if you continue to push that door and use it as a lever, you're going to make the frame want to separate from the wall. I have seen instances where the frame has absolutely been removed from the wall by an inch. I have seen scenarios where the door is attached via a continuous hinge to a frame that's been welded to steel channel, but the entire door has become on that outside corner, the outside corner of the brick, so severely bent like this it's no longer flat the door is six inches of straight and then it goes off at a 15 degree angle um, that sort of scenario is not wind related that scenario is vandalism 
that scenario is something hitting it that should not hit it. Um, in extreme examples, will any hardware prevent the damage? No. But what you're looking to do is mitigate damage to a person, obviously. Um, imagine a door being opened to that degree where it will start to separate the anchoring of the frame to the wall. And if someone's behind that door, you run the risk of significant damage to the person, a harm. Damage to the material, door and frame, but also you compromise the integrity of the anchoring to the wall of the frame, and that's crucial. But also if there's any glass involved in the storefront, let's say, or in the door itself, or a side light, you know. Anyway, you see the point. The better method for controlling the door, the better. Crash chains are not ideal. They're not what I would recommend, and they're certainly inelegant. But in some instances, they're the only option that you have. And if you take certain precautions, you can greatly mitigate the potential for a failure. Now, moving on, where do you install? Oh, you know what? Moving on, the rest of the extended description. Commercial check chain, crash chain we call them. It's heavy duty, I would agree. 30 and a half, we'll talk about that in a moment. Heavy duty, duty welded chain. The chain links here that are about 3 16 of an inch diameter, or the wire thickness, the chain link thickness, evidence of that welding that's there. Uh, while I have this open, I have disassembled these springs in the past by pulling that, pinching the hooks down, sliding it through, reducing the number of springs to close it down because I didn't need it so long, and putting it back together. It's a hassle to do that, but I've certainly done it with complete success in the past. So keep that in mind, uh, that you might do that if you needed to. If you had, if you only had 30 and a half and you had to put it on a 32 inch door, it's either have this hang down a whole heck of a lot, uh, or have it incompatible, or remove some links using that method. Two compression coil springs, zinc die cast mounting brackets with a gray vinyl cover, mounting hardware included, which are self tapping screws, and indeed they are made of steel, the chain and the springs are made of steel. There is a link below this video to a document called template and I would not call it template, uh, I would call it product brochure because that's what it is. It gives you a couple of dimensional properties of the base of the, of the item. Installation aspect, now where are you going to use a 30 and a half inch length? You're going to use that when you've got a 3 foot 6 door or a 4 foot door. 25 and a half inch, the, the Paramount 3560 is the most common one because three foot doors that it's intended for are the most common door size. If you've got a wider door, you're going to want to deal with something longer like this. You're going to mount it to the uh, rabbit of the frame, the soffit, forgive me, the soffit of the frame, not the rabbit. You're going to then mount, one plate will go to the soffit, the other plate will go to the face of the door. You're going to want to probably think about a dimension from the edge of the door over of about 21 inch. And maybe from the vertical jam over on the header of maybe about 18 inch. Forgive me, I said that backwards. 18 inch on the door and about 21 inch on the header. Now, do a reality check on all of that. Hold it up to the door and have you know, someone help you open the door to make sure that it's going to stop the door where you want it to stop. Uh, and keep in mind there are two spring assemblies in here, so that's going to pull a couple more inches, so keep that in mind. Uh, but also that it's not going to interfere with a door closer, with the operation of other hardware that you already have installed. And make sure that that's all clear and there's no conflict there. And once you've got that lined up, mark your points, make your preparation for your anchoring, and then move on. So that pretty much covers everything I have to say regarding this crash chain. There is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Paramount hardware that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. If you are a subcontractor and you install doors and you're looking for very good quality in-stock hinges, uh, door closers, lock sets and exit devices, Paramount's a good name to go with. The get fellas over there, get it shipped out, get it shipped out quickly, uh, do so elegantly, prompt, predictable, reliable, good value for the products, um, and it's generally sitting there in stock. So I like Paramount because they're nimble, they're light on their feet, 
they have a petite footprint within the industry of those primary items. But those primary items are on every doorway. And when the customer service goes along with a good quality value priced product, it makes a confluence of saying to yourself, maybe I should take a look at them or give them a try. I, I would certainly recommend that you give them a try. If you have any questions on the Paramount 3561 30 and a half inch commercial crash chain or any other Paramount product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.